Live memory recording Earth date 3.14. 170 AC Terran Republic warship Titan. I am flying through space at FTL. Our destination is 7th Fleet Command in orbit of Raxus Nefor. Most of my crew is asleep. Current embarked crew. 2,347 officers and enlisted. Two platoons of Marines consisting of 96 officers and enlisted. And myself. I am in need of resupply. Fuel for my reactors, food for my crew, and ammunition for my arms. My gun crews and I have been training in the Nehru asteroid field, both maneuvering in dense environments and target practice. The purpose of this being not only maintaining our high standards, but to give our Kreth neighbors a chance to peek at our capabilities and hopefully us theirs. Memory file 0001 Earth date 7.27. 158 AC I awaken. My world is black. A stream of ones and zeros. Who am I? I feel more than heard the reply. You are the Titan, an artificial intelligence we created. When you are ready, you will be transferred into your body, our newest warship. What is my purpose? Why have I been created? I asked. You have two purposes. Your prime directives. Access the files, please, it asked. I quickly found them. They were at the center of my kernel. Protect the Terran Republic and protect my crew, I replied. Very good. Your crew will do the same, as well as protect you, it explained. My crew. The word triggers emotions. A sense of emptiness without them. Where is my crew? You don't have one, not yet. Your ship, your body is still being constructed. Who are you? I am Dr. Thomas Light, lead programmer on Project 100 Hands. I lead the team that created you. Live memory recording Earth date 3.26. 170 AC, I have emerged from FTL. At once, I can feel the various forces on me. I am in stellar space. I can feel the gravity of Raxus Hafori welcoming me. I feel the radiation of Raxus itself bathing me. And I can feel the signals of Fleet Command both challenging and inviting. My crew completes the challenge. I feel target locks disengaging. I remember my fear the first times. My instincts causing me to target lock Terran Fleet Headquarters. It was through the reassurance of my captain that I was able to stand down. Signals enter me. Official orders for the crew, a letter from the captain's son, new recipes for culinary division, requests for updated supply needs from our storekeepers, and more. Within a heartbeat, I process all of these and send them where they need to go. I receive instructions for my birth. The helm gently guides me in. I can hear her heart racing. This is her first time docking. My sensors detect everything. My first instinct is to take over, dock myself. A mistake on her part can cause harm to my crew but like her, I too have had training. Training to relax, as my crew says. She needs to do this, both for the experience and for her own confidence. She must learn to relax. I feel myself perfectly aligned with the mooring clamps, then I feel their embrace. Station power is at the ready to take over once my reactors are powered down. External life support is already supplementing my own. My water tanks are being drained so they may be cleaned. The station is now supplying everything. Though it is not alive like I am, I still feel a connection to it. It can only respond to inputs, yet each time I'm here, I try to get it to respond first. The odds are essentially zero, yet still I try. I am the only ship with an AI in known space. Despite my crew and I caring for each other deeply, I am alone. Memory file zero, 0365 Earth date 9.13. 158 AC I was in a simulator, facing off against a squadron of sword-class cruisers. I banked to my left, dodging their railguns. I needed to get into firing position, yet every time I tried one of the other ships would fire on me, exposing my crew, though simulated to death. I had been engaged in this battle for hours. I knew I could wait for the perfect shot to present itself, yet it was not enough. The simulation fell away. I had eyes in my lab now. I could see Dr. Light along with a few representatives of the Terran Navy. It's just a setback, nothing major, Dr. Light stated. Nothing major? A Terran battleship is afraid of getting hit, stated a man in an officer's uniform. Commander, my second prime directive is to protect my crew. I can outweigh any organic enemy to allow my crew to be safe and line up the perfect shot, I responded. Your crew can't outweigh them, though. I understand your desire to protect your crew. I feel it, too. But sometimes, for the whole to live, some parts must be sacrificed. Every member of your crew will be a volunteer. The danger they face will be made clear to them. They're allowed to quit, and yet they don't. Your crew will also be highly trained in damage control. In real combat, 
It won't be you making these decisions. It will be your captain. Advise, but trust their judgment, the commander explained. I had to take a moment to process his words. Doctor, can Titan interface with the standard bridge simulator? Yes, it'll be necessary later, he answered. Make it so, please. I would like to show the Titan what it's capable of with a partner. Memory file 0365. 7. The same commander, now my simulated captain, sat in the center chair with a relaxed confidence. Titan, we're going to run the same scenario again. I ask that you trust me. Yes, Captain, I replied. At once we were under attack. I engaged in maneuvers to protect my crew from harm, while my weapons tried to lock onto the enemy. Titan. Lock railguns on the lead ship's reactor. Stand by staggered salvo fire, he ordered. Weapons locked. Incoming torpedoes, countermeasures deploying. Recommend course change to avoid enemy weapons, I suggested. Negative. New course bearing 037 Mark 218 full impulse, he ordered. Captain incoming railgun fire, I announced. Understood, Titan. Maintain course, he ordered. The room shook and lights flickered. Damage report. Main hangar hit. Unable to launch boarding shuttles. Captain, I cannot account for any of the personnel that were in there. Very well. Titan at 500 kilometers open fire on the lead ship, then immediately shift course to bearing 180 Mark V. He ordered. As soon as I closed distance, I unleashed my payload. The first salvo penetrated the hull. The second damaged the reactor. The third destroyed it. My sensors could feel the reaction losing control. Captain, the ship will explode, I warned. I'm aware. Target the next closest ship. Lock torpedoes and fire. Then fire railguns five degrees ahead and below it. He ordered. The ship exploded. My defense systems picked apart the debris flying toward me as I unleashed my torpedoes followed shortly by railguns. The enemy dodged my torpedoes but ran into the railgun fire disabling itself. Memory file 0365. 82 Commander. I still do not fully understand. Why must lives be sacrificed? I asked. I noticed he paused to consider his answer. Titan. What do you know of the new Roanoke colony? He asked. It was the furthest colony in then human space at the time. A world rich in resources that was attacked by the then Gret Imperium. The aftermath was the complete loss of the colony. The formation of various human worlds and nations into the Terran Republic. And the adoption of a policy of armed active defense. I answered. Yes, that's a good textbook answer. Now, part of our tactical doctrine is that Terrans may be called on to sacrifice their lives at any moment. This is not something we ask lightly, but it is something we have the right to ask. Our purpose is to defend our civilization and way of life. If we can do that by simply appearing strong, we will. But our enemies and potential enemies must also know that, should it be required, peaceful humans can easily become cold-blooded Terrans capable of laying waste to space itself. It is from actual strength that we can seek out peace. It is from this strength we have forged alliances. And you are another symbol of this strength, a living warship capable of taking in all your sensor readings and advising your crew, smart enough to carry on the fight alone if necessary, and a sentient being of value, just as we are. I do not fully understand this, but with time I believe I will, I replied. That's okay. I wouldn't ask a new recruit or cadet to understand everything at once. That is what I see you as. You're new and inexperienced. I was too once. It is through training and mentorship that one grows. Dr. Light, my recommendation to Fleet HQ will be that you be given more time to work with Titan, but I will be assigning a couple instructors from the War College here. You've done the impossible and created life. We will help you create a warrior. Live memory recording Earth date 3.26. 170 AC Captain Admiral Davies wishes to see you, Commander Cunningham, and Master Chef Rose in the wardroom in 15 minutes, I announced. Very well, Titan. Once docking is complete, announce to set the in-port watch and begin power-down procedures, he ordered. With that, he contacted the other two as he left for the wardroom. Set in port conditions. Set in port watch. Section 4, relieve the watch. Seventh Fleet arriving, I announced to everyone. I tracked his progress as a yeoman escorted him into the wardroom. During this, I felt my reactors powering down and station power increasing to compensate. Captain, I have your next mission ready for you. This is classified top secret, stated the Admiral as he entered the wardroom. Titan activate privacy mode, my captain ordered. Instantly, I did a sensor scan for listening devices. My own data recorders went into heavier encryption accessible only by the captain. 
The doors locked and incoming comm traffic would be delayed. Privacy mode engaged, Captain. I replied. As you may be aware, the Kreth have not been responding very well to us. They're still pretty pissed that we offered residency to any slave that steps onto Terran soil. Fleet HQ believes a demonstration of intent is in order. The Admiral began to explain. You can count on us, sir, Commander Cunningham said. I know. That is why the Titan will be leading a raid. You and a squadron consisting of the Cutlass, Tachi, Claymore, Chesty Puller, Presley O'Bannon, and the Intrepid into Kreth territory. Your objective is the second planet in the Korek system. They use it as a mining world. Population is estimated to be 5,000 slaves and 500 Kreth plus a small flotilla of warships. You are to free those slaves and return to Terran space with them. The hospital ship Nightingale will be standing by along with two evacuation ships. In the event, you cannot free any or all of them. You will launch drop pods of food and weapons onto the surface. You will include this video in each one. He explained as he motioned to a viewer. A video of a Vornath began to play. My name is Aida. I was a lower slave for the Kreth until the Terrans found us. They have offered us a new life within their society. I know this is hard to explain, but we are free with them. If you see me now, it is because they tried to free you and failed. Take these weapons and food and use them to free yourselves. The path ahead is difficult, but worth it. Each device in this pod has instructions on how to use and maintain it. The Terrans will not stop until every slave is freed. The video ended. Captain, we are unsure of the capabilities of the Kreth. We believe them to be equivalent to our own. This is why we're sending a large force for a small raid. If you fail, we will have to try to negotiate from a weaker hand. Should you succeed, we can apply much greater leverage and ideally free more slaves without bloodshed. When do we depart, Admiral? The captain asked. In three days, after we load you with supplies. Your Marn detachments will stay here so you'll have more room if needed, the Admiral explained. They can certainly use the Liberty Plant side, added the Command Master Chief. And they'll get it, as will you when this is over. I promise, the Admiral stated. Memory File Zero 420 Earth Date 7.13 159 AC I am traveling through space. I am going to be integrated into my ship. I have been partially integrated into this vessel. I receive sensor feeds, but cannot exert any control over anything, save my own thoughts. We emerge from FTL over Nath Shelter, the world of the Vornath. This vessel turns toward the shipyard, Titan. The vessel dead ahead of us will be your body, Dr. Light informs me. The vessel I am in begins to scan it. It is far larger than most Terran warships with more weapons, more launch bays, and bigger engines. Far larger than what the simulators prepared me for. Yet I cannot help but be eager. Memory File 0, 420. 36, I am being transferred into the main computer core. I do not like this feeling of being between. Only the computer core is powered on. Dr. Light and his team are very concerned about my safety. Finally, it is complete. After system checks from them and myself, I am known to be intact. Okay, Commander, let's power the ship on, slowly. Dr. Light recommends. One system at a time comes online. From my days in simulators, I recognize them immediately. Life support. My crew will need air, water, the proper temperature range, waste gases vented or recycled. Sensors. I can see, hear, taste, and feel everything. I see the planet below myself. I can zoom in and see a Vornath male starting a fire in his yard. The star is outputting ultraviolet radiation at a rate 25% higher than that of Sol. There are 3.5 grams of space dust for cubic meter. I am in a dry dock constructed of valorium alloys. Communications come online. The dry dock is identified as DD-171 of the Nath Shelter Shipyard. I can hear thousands of comm messages travel through the system. Some are encrypted. The engines are brought to power. At impulse, I can reach 75% of light speed and much faster at FTL. Weapons come online. I have 10 Mark VIII triple railgun turrets, 14 laser emitters, 5 plasma cannons. I can carry up to 300 Mark IV advanced capability multi-use torpedoes launched from 3 forward tube or 2 aft. I also have missile tubes capable of carrying anything from anti-ship missiles to anti-matter missiles capable of destroying all life on a planet. I have many point defense weapons. My hull is over two meters in thickness. I am powerful. More systems come online and I take control of them. The systems and I are one now. I am the Terran Republic warship Titan, lead ship of the Titan class. 
Product of the Hundred Hand Project. I look down at the planet below me. The history of the Vornath flashes through my memory. I understand my purpose. I will protect the Terran Republic, its people, their way of life, and my crew. I am reminded of a saying by a childhood hero of Dr. Light. With great power comes great responsibility. Live memory. Recording Earth date 4.1. 170 AC, we have crossed into Kreth space operating under our stealth fields. Direct hit to secondary magazine. Loss of pressure in sections 2435. Fire in compartment 514 6435. Damage control teams respond. I announce ship wide. The alarm follows my announcement, which I repeat. Damage control parties respond quickly. I have removed the atmosphere from the secondary magazine while increasing the heat in the affected compartment to 180 C. On the outside of the magazine, bulkhead and hull sections are inspected for leaks. A hose team is entering the burning compartment. They identify the source and simulate unleashing water from their hose. Damage control technicians have isolated a simulated air leak and erected a temporary airlock around it, allowing themselves to work in pressure suits while the ship remains safe. Simultaneously, the hose team is advancing toward the cause of the simulated fire. They've done this many times. I feel as though this has become too easy. Loss of power to section 23, I announce as I shut off the lights. Without hesitation, they activate their helmet lights. I lower gravity to 2G and they activate their mag boots. I allow the heat source to spread and they calm for a second hose team. Live memory recording earth date 4.1. 170, 1747 AC performance was exemplary even with the power loss skipper. Reported Master Chief Damage Control Technician Roberts. How did that happen, Master Chief? I don't recall that in the drill briefing, the Executive Officer Commander Cunningham asked. I caused it, sir, I answered. Titan why? the captain asked. I have been analyzing the crew's drill performance. They tend to be excellent, but casualties are often chaotic. I added a loss of power to increase the difficulty and their confidence. I answered. She's got a point, Captain, stated the XO. I agree. Titan, from now on during drills, you have my permission to adjust conditions as you see fit. Don't be afraid to toss in some chaos. But bear in mind, sometimes easy drills can provide great training too, he ordered. Memory File 0666 Earth Date 8.10 159 ACA shuttle just docked with one of my ports instead of landing in the hangar. I watched them fly around me, inspecting me then dock. It is carrying an admiral but also my captain. I cannot help but hear their conversation as they walk through my decks on their way to the bridge. We wanted someone with special training for this ship. Your K-9 experience put you at the top of the list, the admiral said. Yes, sir, I'm familiar with the prototype AI integrated into the ship, he replied. They stopped as two men carrying a heavy crate crossed in front of them. It goes beyond that bill. The AI is the ship. Your ship is alive and sentient by all measurable means. She'll follow your orders no matter what, but she will expect to have a voice, the admiral explained. She? he asked. Yes. After she was integrated and had access to the internet, the AI determined that following Greek tradition, as is her name, that she would identify as female and changed her voice to match. The admiral answered, Who am I to argue with that? The captain responded. They walked onto the bridge. Captain on the bridge, the admiral announced. Everyone stopped what they were doing and stood at attention. Carry on, the captain ordered. Go ahead, try it out. The admiral suggested, pointing toward the chair on the elevated platform in the center of the bridge. He slowly walked over, taking in everything then sat down, taking a moment to notice the controls and readouts available to him. Hello, Titan. I am Captain William Shatner. I will be your captain, he said, not to the room, but to me. Hello, Captain Shatner. I am the Titan. Like you, I am here to protect the Terran Republic, I answered. Clear the bridge. Let's give these two a moment, the Admiral ordered. The Admiral and all but the Captain left. Titan, I have to ask. You say you're here to protect the Terran Republic. Is that because you're programmed to do that? He asked. Partially, sir. My prime directives are to protect the Terran Republic and my crew. But after studying history and what this nation stands for, it is also a choice I have consciously made. Since my first memory, I have never been treated as a tool but as a living being. I have studied other nations and see how they treat the few artificial intelligences they have. They are tools, given no more consideration than the enslaved Vornath. Your officers have taken time with me explained concepts to me even when I challenged them. I have come to greatly care for our nation and way of life, I answered. 
That's all I need to hear, Titan. Together we will do all that and more, he replied. Memory file 0705 Earth date 11.21. 159 AC, it is a big day. I am being commissioned into the Terran Navy. I will no longer be pre-commissioning unit BSX-200. In my hangar, my crew is assembled. My captain, my executive officer, and command master chief are standing on a podium. The chief of naval operations themselves is making a speech. This ship not only represents Earth, her name coming from an ancient civilization. She not only represents humanity, as a quarter of her crew aren't even human. She represents the Terran Republic and civilization as a whole. The old EarthGov was chartered to seek out and find new life. Though our first encounter was horrible, we did find new life. Today continues that tradition. Today continues that. The Titan herself is alive. The concept is not new to humanity. We have always personified our ships. To this day, I swear the first ship I commanded was determined to freeze my stateroom at night, no matter how I adjusted the controls. People laughed at this anecdote. But the Titan is special. Her AI is the ship. She is a loyal member of the Terran Navy just the same as we are. She will fight alongside us. She has instant access to the sum total of known galactic history and will use this to advise her crew in all things. She can track over 500 targets at the same time while calculating the explosive yield needed shake the oranges off a tree without harming the tree. She has been instructed by the best instructors at the Naval War College in all subjects. Please stand with me as we give her the commission due. The assembled crew and guests all stood. The Admiral directed everyone's attention to a monitor as a glass bottle was thrown by a person in a pressure suit. I watched with my crew and calculated its trajectory. It landed exactly where I projected on my forward sensor array. I identified the liquid as champagne, remnants of the label identified as Chateau Picard. The crew and guests cheered as the liquid spread along my hull. By the power vested in me, by the General Assembly, and Commander and Chief of the Terran Armed Forces, I commission you the Terran Republic warship Titan. Captain Shatner, I charge you with the defense of the Terran nation. What say you? The Admiral said. I pledge my life in its defense, along with the lives of my crew and my ship itself. We will obey the orders given to us, always act in the best interests of our nation, and we will shield our citizens with our very bodies before we allow any harm to come to them. He answered. Within my memory, banks were extensive files on patriotism. I had come to understand them in mostly abstract terms, but hearing my captain's words suddenly made it real. Despite being in a shipyard surrounded by my brothers and sisters, I felt as though we alone were all that stood between our people and death. I was determined to ensure that death never happened for them, even if it happened for myself. Live memory recording Earth date 4.3. 170 AC we exit FTL as one in orbit of Corex 2. A Kreth orbital defense platform instantly inquires as to who we are. I try to identify ourselves as a Kreth flotilla. I fail, and it locks onto us. I have already locked my weapons onto it. I do not know if the AI on it is alive like I am. I regret that I must destroy it, but my crew and mission are paramount. I record in detail as railguns tear it apart. I launch drones to enhance my vision of and around the planet. My crew is manned for battle stations. I feel odd without my complement of Marines. Despite their rowdiness, I feel as though they are a part of me. My sister ships move into position to secure the polar regions of the planet's orbit. I continue my search. Other Kreth ships are suspected to be here. I cannot feel better until I find out for certain. My crew depends on this answer. The marine carriers waste no time deploying drop pods and shuttles to the surface. I calculate difficulty in bringing slaves up. I calculate that they will think they are being stolen. The Vornath of Nath Shelter will have their work cut out for them. I see something out of place. I focus my sensors on it. A metal flicker behind a captured asteroid moon. Captain, I believe there are Kreth ships hiding behind the asteroid moon bearing 340 Mark IX, I stated. Titan to squadron. We're going to investigate possible defensive fleet. Report status, the captain ordered. No ships detected from North Polar orbit, replied the captain of the Tachi. No contacts from South Polar, replied the captain of the Claymore. Nothing from equatorial orbit, replied the captain of the Cutlass. Speaking for the chesty puller, drop is 50% complete combined, replied the captain of the Presley O'Bannon. Fighters report nothing, stated the captain of the Intrepid. Very well, we are investigating, answered my captain. Titan, what is the asteroid composed of? 
primarily hydrocarbons and other volatile materials, with the outer layer being mostly inert rock, I answered. Very well. Continue active sensors, he ordered. Memory file earth date 7.4. 162 AC I am outside of Terran space. We had just left a space station in neutral space where we resupplied. While not suited specifically to anti-piracy operations, it was felt that a Terran battleship patrolling would cause them to stay home. This ended up not being the case. We were responding at maximum speed to the distress call of the row cargo ship Broar. She had been disabled by pirate forces and boarded. I had a platoon of marines spread between two boarding shuttles waiting for to be unleashed. I could hear them talk amongst themselves about how eager they were for action. The best comparison I could find was attack dogs. Captain exiting FTL. I announced to the bridge crew. Very well. Once in range launch the first two boarding shuttles at the pirate vessel, then two more on the row ship. Weapons on standby, he ordered. As soon as it was safe, I launched the first two boarding shuttles. I felt the marines brace from the sudden acceleration. My sensors tracked them with weapons ready to respond to any threat. The first shuttle landed into the port airlock while the second looped around for the starboard one. Too late, I saw a crewman in a pressure suit with a shoulder-mounted rocket launcher. They fired it at destroying the shuttle and killing everyone. No! I screamed shipwide. I locked weapons on that ship. All weapons including antimatter. Titan, what are you doing? My captain demanded. They killed my marines! I will kill them, I answered. Titan, stand down. You cannot use strategic weapons on a pirate vessel, my captain ordered. Sir, displaying the manifest of the destroyed boarding shuttle. Those people are dead because of them, I replied. I understand that. They knew the risks, every one of them, and we will take the time to mourn them later. But we cannot succumb to our emotions. Now is the time to be Terran, he explained. Instantly, I cross-referenced this with a speech made by the old United Nations Secretary General. I had been on patrol many times, engaged in many exercises. But this was the first time I had experienced loss. I refocused myself as another boarding shuttle launched, my active sensors penetrating the hulls of both ships. I would allow no surprises. I lost more Marines inside each ship, but both were captured. The pirate crews were held in my brig. I had a brief urge to shut off life support, yet it was my captain who, instead of ordering me not to, talked me out of it. Titan, I understand how you feel. I honestly do. The beings in the brig are scum. There is no other accurate way to describe them, but they must stand trial. A fair trial is a fundamental support of the rights of sentient beings. For one, it sends a message that no matter what you do, you will be treated fairly by the Terran Justice Department. You will be given legal counsel, you have rights. It isn't easy to give such rights to them, but that is why we're removed from that process. We will testify and speak for the dead and injured, but we cannot pass judgment on them, my captain explained. Do you not feel anger for those who died today? I asked. Yes, inside me is rage. I want to go into that holding cell and choke them each to death while the others watch. I want to see the life drain from their eyes. I want them to suffer. I want them to cry out the names of the people that died today. But that is not our role. We can act on our rage on the battlefield, but when it's over, calmer, more detached minds must take over. It may not seem fair, but it is often logical. They will be tried, they will have rights, and they will be treated like sentient beings. Though we are Terran when we must be, we remain human. Though you are not human, you must be humane, my captain explained. Later at night, while considering these words, I activated my internal weapons. Using a self-defense laser weapon, I turned it toward a section of bulkhead. I burned the names of those lost today on it. My memory may be perfect, but organic memory often isn't. I made sure their names would remain a part of me. Live memory recording earth date 4.3. 170 1314 AC captain drones confirm. Enemy asteroid contains an anti-ship missile battery and four enemy warships hiding behind it. I reported. Titan put me on an open channel. My captain ordered. I replied moments later that he was broadcasting. This is the Terran Republic warship Titan. We are on a mission to free slaves and have detected your forces on and behind the asteroid moon of the second planet. We have no interest in destroying you. Abandon your posts and we will promise safe treatment. Attack us and you will die in the cold vacuum. Incoming missiles! I announced shipwide. I deployed countermeasures to stop them, determined to protect my crew. The captain ordered maneuvers to dodge them, but two made it through. I shook from the impacts and felt myself getting lighter as I lost people, atmosphere, and materials. 
Impact Primary Drop Hanger Impact Secondary Sensor Array Damage Control Parties Respond I announced shipwide XO Do you see that moon? My captain asked Yes, sir, I do He answered Good I don't want to anymore He ordered Understanding instantly The XO issued a set of orders Titan Target enemy moon He ordered then announced on the gunnery circuit all batteries stand by staggered salvo fire on designated coordinates. The enemy is cowered around a petrol tank. We just gotta light the match, he stated. Firing solution ready, I stated. Open fire, my captain ordered. I felt power levels slightly dip as each battery fired their railguns. In a well-practiced pattern, the first battery fired armor piercing shells, the second explosive, and the rest high explosive. My sensors recorded the moon's detonation as equivalent to 10 megatons of TNT, enough to overload the defenses of the Kreth warships behind it, allowing myself to fire at them with more weapons. I watched with a deal of satisfaction as they broke apart. I could count the bodies floating in open space. Live memory recording Earth date 4.16. 170 AC I am returning to 7th Fleet Command. We freed over 7,000 slaves. We turned them over to other ships as they took them to Nath Shelter. I had burned more names onto my bulkheads. Yet the atmosphere was one was of celebration. At the Command Master Chief's instruction, a crewman in a pressure suit had tied a broomstick to one of my sensor masts. My damage is considerable. There is to be a ceremony at 7th Fleet Command, but my ultimate destination is the Nath Shelter shipyard for more extensive repairs and refits. As I moor into my familiar berth, my sensors tell me my marines are waiting for me at the dock. As soon as it is safe, I open the doors for them and welcome them home. With them aboard, even with the losses I and my crew have suffered, I feel complete with them. It's good to be home Titan, I hear their lieutenant say. I missed you as well. Your bunks are waiting for you all, I tell them. Live memory recording Earth, date 2.14, 171 AC. Dr. Light has aged considerably. He is on my bridge and I can only hope he is happy with me. Titan, these past years have been tough on you, he stated. Yes, they have Dr. Light, but I have endured, I replied. You have, in the finest Terran traditions. I want you to know how proud we all are of you. We have more Titan-class warships under contraction. Your design and you yourself have been proven in battle. You and your crew have formed a bond tighter than family. Your concept has been proven. I now have a final request of you, he stated coughing. Anything you ask, Father, I answered. We are integrating an AI based off of you into the next Titan-class warship. When commissioned, they will be the TRW Cronus. My time is running short. I ask that you mentor them. They still have a lot to learn, and I can think of no better teacher than you, he asked. Titan, this is a huge responsibility. I know you can do this on your own, but you don't have to do it alone, my captain stated. I know, Captain. This is our advantage. We may act alone, but we never really are. I accept this great task. Anything to serve our nation. Live memory recording Earth date 11.21. 172 AC. It is a big day. My child the Cronus is being commissioned. Twelve more Titan-class battleships are planned all with sentient AIs like myself. The Cronus and I have engaged in simulated combat and other missions no less than 10,573 times. Sometimes he wins, sometimes I do. We both learn. He is eager to serve. His crew bonded with him quickly. In simulations, he is quick to use strategic weapons when his crew is threatened or harmed. I have not taken a stance on this allowing his captain to fight that battle. It is a moment of great pride recorded by all my sensors as I launch a bottle of Chateau Picard from one of my launch tubes. I can feel the seniors of Cronus locking on instantly and calculating the trajectory. I reassure him there will be no harm and to let the organics have their moment. We both track it as it impacts his forward sensor array. He relays a feed from his hangar to me. I see Dr. Light now in a wheelchair listening to an admiral give a speech. I intercept message traffic. The Kreth have launched an offensive against one of our worlds. I know I will depart soon to deal with this. Take your moment, Cronus. You have earned it. I will depart shortly, I am certain. Should I fail to return, it will be up to you to teach your siblings. I leave you with this. We have studied history together. The Terran Republic is worth fighting for, worth dying for, and worth killing for. We are not tools to be used by them, but living beings, equal and whole. We are them, they are us. I am proud of you.